All right, we continue our series talking about the four gifts of generosity. And um, man, it's been kind of fun, especially during Christmas and this is kind of a season of giving. As we talk about generosity, um, we're really talking about uh, the motivations of our heart. Um, the first week we talked about the gift of God, for God so loved the world. He gave, and, and this is about the, the, having spiritual access. God sends Jesus into the world, and the essential nature of the incarnation is so that now we can be reconciled to God, have access to his kingdom. And so like, uh, there's a spiritual portal that is opened and now that the Holy Spirit of God lives in us. And so the, the greatest gift ever given is the gift of God and his son, Jesus. And then that, that opens this doorway um, to where now we have uh, a, a domino if you will, that that is uh, been tipped, and so um, when we talk about how how that uh, cascades is, um, uh, we talk about the gift of supply, which is what we talked about last week. So now that the um, spiritual portal has been opened and the gift of God has been given, we have access to the kingdom by way of the Holy Spirit. We talked about how um, we have an unlimited supply chain, um, that God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills, our Father in heaven, is gonna supply all of our needs. And so if we truly believe that in faith, then we don't live in a spirit of scarcity. We don't live uh, with, with lack. We understand that if the Holy Spirit leads us to give, then we can give freely because um, our supply is going to be met, and then the the next that the next domino that tips is uh, what we're going to talk about today is the gift of laughter, the gift of joy, and it really is um, this idea that because um, God's opened uh, the kingdom to us, because the supply is is um, in store, that the supply chain is is wide open and that all of our needs are met in Christ Jesus, that we can give with joy. We can give, um, as scripture says, with hilarity or this blessing. And so in 2 Corinthians 9, the scripture says in verse 6, talking about these spiritual laws, okay, the law, the spiritual law of economics. And this is the first one. Whoever sows sparingly, will reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now, he who supplies seed to the sower for bread will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. This service that you perform not only supplies the needs of the Lord's people, but is overflowing in thanks to God. So it actually comes back to God in praise. Because of the service which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surprising grace that God has given you. So this gift of laughter, this gift of joy, the fun, uh, the hilarity of giving is uh, God has opened his kingdom to me and I have access in the supply of every good and perfect gift. Everything I need comes from God. And so when he prompts me, I can give with great joy and hilarity. Why? Because one, you reap what you sow. And so, so generously, so generously because it comes back to you. And then he says this. Um, the second thing is this. You give to what you love. We talked about this in the first week. 
Um, where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. You give to what you love. And he says, so look, what have you decided in your heart to give? Have you decided in your heart to be a cheerful giver? Have you decided in your heart to sow generously? What's in your heart to do? He, and, then he, and then he qualifies it in verse 7. He says, not reluctantly or under compulsion. So there's two aspects to this. One, oh, well, I, you know, I kind of reluctant. Ah, you know, I'll, yeah, I'll give it. Or compulsion. Oh, I have to. I ought. I should. All right, this guilt trip, like it's something I have to do. God doesn't want that. Right, and so some of us we have to look at the heart, our heart, and the affections of our heart. And oh man, this is so hard. And here, here the 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 more money you make, the harder it is to write that big check. If your heart is focused on the money, right? If you don't believe that to 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 sow generously is to reap generously, I'm going to give more, right? Um, then you're like, oh, ooh, man, when I was writing a $50 check uh, on a 500 uh, paycheck, you know, that, that was hard, but it's not nearly as hard as writing a $50,000 check, right, on a $500,000 income. And so um, he says, don't, don't be reluctant. Don't, don't feel like guilted or uh, under compulsion. Check your heart. What's in your heart to do? You want to reap uh, abundantly? Then sow abundantly. Not reluctant, not under compulsion. And then this is where he says, God loves a cheerful giver and is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, you will have everything you need. This, again, it goes back to the supply chain thing. So don't worry about it, he says. Give with joy. Give with hilarity. That's what God loves. God loves it when you're just like, oh, yeah, I want to participate in God's kingdom. I want to get big. I had this, uh, Jody and I were sitting um, with our daughter-in-law, and she's been living with us. They got married in September. My son moved to Austin, and she has uh, to fulfill her contract here at Northside in San Antonio. And so she's been living with us, and then they get together on the weekends strange way to start their marriage but they're making the most of it and so um in the evenings we get to sit down with our, our daughter-in-law caroline and um, um she came back from the weekend and she's bouncy and she goes oh i'm just so proud of connor that connor's my son and i said oh yeah and we're having dinner and she goes yeah he got a big uh check that came in from um the uh, sales that he has done and huge commission check. And um, we were sitting down going over our finances and he takes out this checkbook and he writes a big check, a tithe check to the church. And he was so excited to be able to write this tithe check to the church, even though it was more money than um, he, he'd, he'd ever written a check for. And, um, she says this with this pride and joy and encouragement on her face. And, you know, we started talking about um, these principles that, you know, when our kids were little, we would give them, Jody would give them each a dollar so that they would uh, put it in the offering plate because we want our kids to understand stewardship. We want to teach them the joy. So when they got their little contribution statement at the end of the year and they were able to look and see how much money they had contributed we, we were able to praise god for their generosity and um, just trying to really steward and teach our kids um, how to participate in the kingdom and how to love what god loves because the reality is my kids i mean i tell them look every every night you slept under a roof every meal that you, you have you have uh, placed into your mouth um, when you put clothes on your back community of faith has provided that for you. God's uh, generosity through his people has provided for you and sustained you quite literally every step of the way. And that's true for everyone, but it's especially true for preacher's kids. And so 
I was able to teach them that. And then to now look back and see my son who's grown up, who's on his own, who's now joyfully, the first thing on his mind, uh, when he gets this big check is not what he can buy. The first thing on his mind is to contribute back to God's people and God's kingdom because um, he understands the law of sowing and reaping. If you give generously, God's going to double it down back unto you. Which brings us to the third thing and the third lesson, which we see here in verse 10, that you can't outgive God, but it is sure fun to try. And so verse 10, he says, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Now look at this. This is fascinating. It's not just that um, God makes the harvest plentiful, though he does. He actually supplies the seed that you sow. And so the one who supplies that seed to the one who sows you um is going to increase your store of seed and enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Now, verse 11, you will be enriched in every way. Why? So that you can be generous on every occasion. Here's the thing. God wants, um, he wants his, his money, his resources in circulation. He wants his blessing in circulation. And so he, he gives it to those people who are going to sow seed. And so if you're a sower of seed, if you're someone who sows the seed of faith, um, God looks at you and says, that's a good steward. So I'm going to give him more to sow. I'm going to entrust him with more. And so you can't out give God. Why? Because he's just going to pour it back and back and back onto you. And you're like, wow, God, you gave me more that I'm going to give more. You keep giving more and he gives you more. And so um, it's, it's a spiritual uh, law of supply that those who sow uh, reap, right? And so uh, he, he says you're going to be enlarged, you're going to be enriched. Why? Because it, it leads to result in thanksgiving to God. When people see how you bless them, they praise God and thank God. I was I, I uh, texted my sister this week and thanked God. I uh, thanked, well, was thanking God for his provision in my life through her, because I recognized that what she was doing was simply being obedient to God. And so I'm thanking her, yes, but I'm actually thanking and praising God for her generosity. And so when you get that right in your head, the, the, everything I have comes from God. It, it came through somebody else, and so, so thank you, but thank you more importantly for being obedient to God. And you can't outgive God. I, I remember this story, because uh, it was early days as a pastor, one of my mentors, uh, Jack Stevens, is a financial planner. And uh, there was a young woman in our church. Uh, she was a young mother at the time. And um, he was consulting her and helping her with her finances. And she didn't have enough. She was raising kids and, and she was on her own, single mom. And she says, I need a raise. I need a raise. So Jack says, look, do you believe in um, reaping and sowing? Do you believe in the spiritual law of supply? Uh, do you believe that God's going to supply all your needs, that, that you can't outgive him? Um, and she said, well, I want to, but but I, I mean, I'm having a hard time making it. He goes, you know, why don't you, how much money do you want to make? And she, she told him how much she, she felt like she needed to make. And it was a significantly larger amount than she was presently making. So he says, I'll tell you what, why don't you start tithing on the amount that you want to make. She goes, you mean, but I'm only making like uh, $40,000 and I need to make $60,000. So my tithe is $4,000. You're saying that my tithe is now going to be $6,000? And he said, yeah, why don't you start tithing on that? She goes, I, I, don't, I don't have that. He goes, I know you don't have that, but you can't all give God. And then Jack would always say, there's only one place in the Bible where God tells you to test him. Everywhere else, God says, thou shalt not put the Lord your God to the test. But there in Malachi 3.10, it says, test me in this. And he's talking about the tithe. And Jack was big on that. And so Jack said, test him. He's asking you, test him. 
So Myra, she started writing her tithe check that would equal uh, $6,000, which would be 10% of $60,000. And I kid you not, within six weeks, this girl gets a raise, and it is more than uh, her $60,000 raise. And what she started doing by faith, um, God looks at her heart. He sees the joy, the cheerfulness. He sees the willingness, the 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 hilarity behind the risk taking of God. I trust you. You you you've opened the portal of of uh, supply to me, and so I'm going for it. And sure enough, um, why? Because God loves it. Why? Because it just circles back. I'm telling this testimony probably 15, 20 years later about this story that I, I'll never forget. Um, because someone went out and stepped out in faith and said, God, I'm going to test you and I'm going to trust you. So you can't outgive God, man, but it is fun to try. And the reason that is, is because it overflows. It overflows and spills into the life of others. And then they testify about the goodness of God. And then they talk about uh, your generosity and they're praying for you. Why? Because you're a person of generosity. And like, oh, I'm going to pray for for this Myra gal, because man, when God blesses her, it, it, it pours, and thank you God for this. And so that's what it says there in verse 13. He says, because of the service you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for your obedience. And then in verse 14, it's, and their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace that God has given you. And so there's this domino effect of praise and thanksgiving and praising God and praising God for his people and their generosity. Why? Because you can't get out, out give God. Because once you trust the spiritual supply chain that the kingdom of heaven is now open to you and God is the giver of every good and perfect gift, then you can give with joy and you can give with hilarity. Um, just this kind of God's got this and the confidence. Jesus said it in Luke 6, uh, and Paul is pretty much reteaching it in 2 Corinthians 9. But in Luke 6, and Jesus says, and it's a little bit of a nuanced understanding, and I want to hone in on this because I think one of the areas where we don't give um, is when it's way beyond us. And so, so Jesus says in Luke 6, give to everyone who asks. If anyone asks, take what belongs to you, don't demand it back. So if someone takes uh, from you, he says, don't demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. This is the golden rule. But we rip that out of context because he just got saying, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, don't demand it back. And then he says, do unto others. Well, we would, we, we would say, well, that guy stole from me. What do you mean don't demand it back? Right? Do unto others. And, and we don't see the golden rule in this context. And he goes on to say, if you love those who love you, what credit is it to you? Even sinners love those who love them. Meaning, if you give and are kind and generous simply to family members or people within your circle. He says, sinners do that. What credit is that to you? This is hard because most of our giving takes place in a very close, intimate, our generosity is in a close, intimate circle. If you do those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? The only people you do good to are those who do good to you. If you lend to those whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Meaning, you loan money to someone because you know they're going to pay you back? Just what credit is that to you? So he's talking about um, lending without ever expecting return. Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. In full verse 35. But Love your enemies, do good to them, lend to them without expecting anything in return. So the golden rule rethought is to just give. Give out of your heart what's in your heart to do. Love your enemies. Be the kind of person who cheerfully gives and loves their enemies and gives without any expectation. Now think about expectation. Um, 
What about a thank you card? Well, they didn't even say thank you. You gave expecting a thank you. We had this, uh, you know, this is years ago. Um, in our family, the family dynamic changed a little bit. And on one side of my family, um, they just stopped giving birthday presents. And my wife was a little upset because um, all of a sudden, you know, we're not getting the cousins any birthday presents and, um, you know, in-laws changed and said, we're just not doing it anymore. And so I said, well, who says we're not doing that anymore? And uh, she says, well, you know, they're not giving them birthday presents, so why are we we're not going to give them their presents? Said, no, 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 no. What is in your heart to do? Do you want to give those uh, nieces and nephews um, presents? Then give them. Who cares what everybody else is doing? Do what's in your heart to do. Don't give expecting to get. Don't give expecting a return. Um, give what's in your heart to give. And so most of the time we give to those in our immediate circle, our family members, we give expecting to get, whether it's a thank you card, whether it's appreciation, approval, recognition. Um, do what's in your heart, expecting nothing in return. And don't just give to those you love. Don't just give to those who are in your circle. Don't just give to those who can give back. He says, the golden rule do unto others is if you were impoverished and you were a stranger and you were an immigrant that was just landed in this country and you knew no one, you would want someone to reach out to you. You would want someone to care for you. You would want someone to be kind and generous to you, even though you didn't know them, even though um, you were a perceived enemy of them, even though you had no ability to repay them. You would want someone to show kindness to you. That's the golden rule. Not I give to get. Not I give because they're my friend or my family member. Or uh, they gave to me last year. Do unto others. So rethink the golden rule. So ultimately the joy of giving um, is modeled for us by Jesus. Scripture says this. Jesus who for the joy set before him endured the cross. And so we see this gift of generosity that, that you can't outgive God, the joy of, of giving um, pictured in Jesus. God so loved the world, he gave his son. And then his son looked at the cross with joy. Why? Because the giving of himself, he knew was going to glorify his father he knew was going to accomplish the perfect will of his father and reconcile lost sinners back to the father. And so with joy, he could now give God the father. He knew that no matter, even if he laid down his life, God was going to raise, his father was going to raise him up. And so with joy, with hilarity, Absolutely convinced in the supply chain. Absolutely convinced that he couldn't outgive God. Absolutely convinced that God was going to, to um, enrich and enlarge his harvest. He lays down his life, he himself, the seed, into the ground. And God raised him up to bountiful harvest, which is you and I. And the same thing is true enough for you and I. When we lay down our lives, when we sow the seed of our lives, and our time, with our talent and with our resources. God enriches that back to us. And it brings praise and glory to God. People testify to that. And you receive the spiritual richness and the spiritual blessing. Not just the material things. That, that too happens. But much more so in immaterial things. The blessing of relationships. The blessing of um, seeing your time and your talents um, produce everlasting fruit. So I hope wherever this finds you, it finds you rethinking um, what is in your heart. When you give, give with hilarious joy. Give out of conviction that the Holy Spirit of God led you to give. Don't you know? use it to justify getting yourself into crazy debt. That's not God's desire. 
Um, but give out of what's in your heart to give with freedom, with joy, knowing that you can't outgive God and that he's going to supply all of your needs. And that Jesus, his great joy was to lay down his life so that those of us who have, are not in relationship with him could be brought into relationship with him. And those that are in relationship with him could, with full and sincere hearts, live and serve a life full of purpose and meaning. Hope this finds you well. Um, God bless you and uh, have a Merry Christmas.